buffering bottles? I didn't see a glass till I was 38. What, we, what were you drinking? Oh, chair, fruit, fruit, jelly jars. Jelly, right? <laughs> you wait an hour for it to get cold, right? And you wait another hour for the cloud to make itself into water, right? Because it's very white when it comes out of the tap in a Jewish household. And then you, you, you smash into another jelly jar. And you say confusion to the French. I don't know what you said in your house. We used to say confusion to the French. We were a very classy family. We interrupted you, George. No, I was just, I, have, I, I find now as you talk about your compulsions that I, uh, doors in men's rooms uh, are a problem to me. I will tend, if it's, a, if it's a, like a hook handle, I will tend to get my pinky under the least part of the handle where I feel the least number of people have opened the door by yeah. that. Because who knows, maybe they haven't washed their hands. Right. God knows I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a heritage from your mother? It beats me where I got that from, but he was talking about... You're a major source of contamination in public restrooms, I, aren't you? I probably am. Are, are there I like to go to California, yeah. Stephen. Because in California, when you go to a men's room, you get called a caballero. And I, I like to know when I'm coming out of a men's room for just what I did, I'm all of a sudden a caballero. Only yeah, certain really... people in men's rooms call you a caballero. Oh, right. I have, talking about the, the, the uh, cooking bit, I've, I'm convinced that the Jewish mother thing about mothers being good cooks is, 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 is hogwash. My mother's a lousy cook. She always was a lousy cook. She cooks the same thing over and over again. You're getting it all out. Lousy and lousier. I think whoa, she's a lovely whoa. lady. She's a lovely lady, but a lousy cook. I come home on a Friday night for dinner, and it's uh, it's pot roast, and it's so thin, and I try to tell her how to make it. But it's very <laughs> but she, tender, right? From no, cooking it's not it seven very days, tender. it's very tender. <laughs> uh, do you have idiosyncrasies that you think uh, came out of your boyhood, out of your mother's uh, uh, supervision? Oh, probably, sure. I don't, 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 didn't we all? I think so. Not me. No, none of us none. here. <laughs> no, no, no. No. But you do tend, <clears throat> it's true, that's a very good point, you do tend to emulate characteristics of your mother subliminally without realizing it. For instance, I'm sure that Stan's mother had a mustache. She did. <laughs> Absolutely. Some, I mean, otherwise, why? She was why born, she was born in, in, in January, which is a mustache month. I didn't know that. I thought it was, I thought it was the month of the tiger. To tell you the truth. Do you, do you have little phobias, little... Yeah, you want to see them? Yeah. <laughs> do you have any... Why don't we go up the room? We'll up the <laughs> no, do you have eccentricities that you, you know, lay at the doorstep of certain boyhood experiences? I was in analysis six years, and I could not launch a decent attack against my mother. I like my mother. I love my mother. If, if I could, I would go skinny dipping with my mother. <laughs> I'm crazy about that lady. Good-natured, bright, fierce, little woman that came over from Russia, didn't speak the language, never learned this language, never learned Russian, <laughs> never learned any language. Talks like this. <laughs> and yet, gets to everywhere she wants to go. She's a fantastic How woman. does she do it, Mel? Well, <clears throat> she's an aquarium. When she gets uh, on, a, on a subway, she starts She out. gets on a subway and she says to the conductor, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going for Brighton. Me, me. I have to, you know, my son. My, you know my son's from television. She tells the conductor. You know my son's Mel Brooks. She tells everybody. Yeah, I'm Mel Brooks. Does that get her to Brighton? Yes. He said, "Well, Mel Brooks, you must want to go to Kings Road, right?" Yeah. You know the most. Myron Cohn has influenced me more than my mother. How? Why? Because the two sides of me, the two different, the two different things that make up Mel Brooks, that strange amalgam, marvelous pastiche that is me. Yeah. <laughs> could, you, could, you, yes. could you describe the, the, Comes from Myron the, the two sides? <laughs> first of all, the first side, Sir Anthony Eden. Right? Oh, you know, clearly, right. clearly. When Myron Cohn tells a joke, he starts off like Anthony Eden. There's not a trace, not a scintilla, not a hint of a Jewish accent. You don't know he's Jewish till he hits the joke. Oh, I do, I do. Right? <laughs> no, David, David, no, when he starts out, he does, he does it like this, right? Myron Cohn. Picture, if you will, right? Here we go. Myron Cohn. There were two gentlemen <laughs> of rather Hebraic persuasion who encountered each other on the, on the Rialto. <laughs> One gentleman uh, said to the other uh, uh, something uh, about boarding a public conveyance. And so both of them uh, got on board a tram or a bus. I, I don't really know what you call it here in the United States. <laughs> and uh, they were riding down one of the marvelous boulevards you have here in, in, in your lovely city. And one of the Jewish gentlemen turned to the other and said, I mean, Mr. Gavay, when the... 
<laughs> it's well, schizophrenic. There's two different people, right? Right. You don't know he's Jewish until they have Vibis in the game part. Right. right. <laughs> now, what's, what's the other part of you? And the other... The, the, other, the other part of you is just the pure... The other part of me is a, a lot of Fred Astaire. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? Is he gonna yes, up? I do. All right. Could you I'll, be careful with the mic? Yeah, I'll show okay. you a little Fred Astaire. Right. Okay. I'm... <laughs> putting on my white tie tying up my black tie putting on my yarmulke you're a uh, <laughs> you're a dead ringer for a stand you're a ringer for it yes. if they ever do the Fred Astaire story <laughs> you're crazy you know <laughs> yes and we'll be back in a minute uh. Before pushing on, I, I can't help no, wondering, before you became uh, famous, a celebrity, I, no, how did man, your mother get to Brighton? And, excuse me, gentlemen, we're on. We're on. Oh, yes. Yes. Before you became an international celebrity. Oh, by the way, yes. did you read Judith Christ's <laughs> review of the 12 chairs now at the Lowest Tower East? Oh, yes, I did. It was, yeah, it was lousy, wasn't it? No, she gave us a very good review. She said it was a complete joy. And she said that I, I am, I'm the best thing that ever happened to film. I did everything on that picture possible, everything. I put the sprockets at the side of the film so the projectionist could thread it up. Your, your modesty is overpowering. I lead you to your seat. You can see me there at the lowest tower any night. Take you right to your seat. I wish you a good time and a hearty appetite. Yes. Uh, what, were, what were you bepturing about, David? No, I, I was wondering. <laughs> Before you became a world figure of renown, I'm sorry. <laughs> how, how did your mother? How did your mother get? How did your mother get to where she was going? I don't know what you mean. She couldn't speak the language. She used just to get... a, a little Jewish aggression. She pushed her way through. As a matter of fact, uh, my mother lives in Miami now, and uh, she just moved down. And I, I said, um, "Are you afraid? You know, it's a." completely different environment your, your children are not there you don't have enough relatives you know i know that it's fraught with people of your persuasion mom but uh still i mean aren't you you know uh frightened scared she said i came from russia that was a move already from <laughs> russia to the united states from new york to florida there's not such a big move i mean it's you know so she really is a gutsy little jewish lady you know she's a is your marvelous father person is your no father? my father died when he was 34 Dan. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother raised four four boys, sent us all to college, and did a fantastic job. That's extraordinary. Is your mother uh, alive at the moment? Yeah. Uh -huh. Does she visit you often from Kansas City? Well, she took a long schlep up to see me in uh, Kansas. From Kansas City, it was about a thirty-hour train ride. She was afraid to fly. She came in the pizzeria and she didn't touch the pizza. You know, and and. Uh, it's trace. It's not Trey. We have locks. Goldilocks yeah. pizza, locks and onions. Really? I mean, Goldilocks The Goldilocks pizzas. pizza, locks and onions. I we see. have a heart-shaped pizza. How does your mother feel about your running a pizzeria? Well, she doesn't talk a lot about it. I mean, I'm sure she'd rather have me be a doctor or a lawyer. What does she say? She said, my son's in food. <laughs> <laughs> How does she cover it? No, she says, my son works in New York, and he's a pizza schlepper. A pizza <laughs> schlepper? <laughs> That's amazing. Mm -hmm. What's it like in Kansas City? Oh, it's pretty well, it's... Everything's up to date in Kansas City. <laughs> well, they've gone about as far. Do, do they have a ghetto there? Is it a ghetto? I no, the Jews, I said, there's only 23,000 Jews, so everybody is Gentile. I didn't meet a Jew until I was uh, That's 25. That's a lot of Jews, 23,000. It is not, because they're spread out over about 800 miles in Kansas City. I'm a That's hillbilly a Jew. Term. I'll bet they get together during pogroms. <laughs> <laughs> bet me they do that. They're all hiding in one big Jew cellar. <laughs> get down there. <laughs> Oh. Watch the Gentiles thunder by. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the things, one of the things I wondered about in, in his book is that section devoted to that moment in time when a Jewish mother discovers her son is engaged or about to make a commitment to a to a girl. Yeah. That's one of the tragic moments in a Jewish mother's life, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's time for a complete about face. I mean, for the preceding, uh, in my case, thirty years, it's. Uh, so when are ready, you know, it's it really, and then the moment comes, and uh, and 
you introduce your intended to her, and she says, it's very nice, very nice girl. A lot of uh, makeup. Where's a lot of makeup? Uh, she drinks. I noticed she was drinking uh, uh, drink before. Uh, I have nothing against drinking. Don't get me wrong. But I did see, notice she was putting it away. I did notice you were putting it away. My mother is amazed that I uh, will have a drink or two uh, before dinner. And as a matter of fact, when we come to Chicago uh, to visit them, she will, I am now married uh, to Nora Ephron Greenberg. She calls herself Nora Ephron, but actually she's Nora Ephron Greenberg. And uh, she will say to my wife, uh, am I talking to you? If you no, want to interrupt at any point, just, let me know, and I'll Ephron let you. Greenberg? This is George Siegel. Uh, yes, yeah, she does know that. I don't know how she feels about that. But she will say to my wife uh, when I'm out of your shot, is Dan uh, still uh, drinking? Uh, <laughs> does, uh, does he drink a lot? Uh, how is his, uh, does he, um, is it a problem? Uh, but anyway, what was your question? I forgot what your question The reaction was. of the Jewish mother. I have an answer to any question. Yes. I have an answer to any question? <laughs> David, when you... Good old... Are you married? No, I'm not. Have you ever been engaged? No, I haven't. I, uh, I play around, you know, and <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm fairly oh. easy. Uh, I have to be asked, and that's pretty much it. But I, we want to talk about my mother. Yes. H how old are you, David? I'm 28. 28. Yeah. The thing about my mother, that you all care, is uh, <laughs> my mother spoke Russian and Yiddish only in the house. And we're a very poor family. We came from a very poor family. Now, lately, it's been kind of nice for me. And I send a little money home. My mother doesn't speak English. I mean, she doesn't know any words. But now in the Yiddish, you start to hear filtering through words like, is that a network show? <laughs> <laughs> Today, when I was in California just yesterday, she said something totally in Yiddish, and the end of the sentence was, the zoi said mit the residuals. So, I mean, she... She's, my mother understands those things. I mean, she learns to adapt to all that. They do throw in the... Uh, yeah, well, there's some, there's some that, that English is, words. That is Yiddish. You know, when, when Yiddish was spoken in Russia, I'm sure they picked up some Russian words. And in Poland, the same. And, and in New York, you hear, Ich hab gegangen auf dem Subway. Yeah. yeah suddenly, you know, it's, it's true that you do get a smattering of a different language. You, the you both... We don't speak Yiddish. When I introduced fluent Yiddish? Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to work in the Bohr circuit as a, as a uh, an MC in a pool. Tumble. That's how you started. So, it, I, Bors, so I learned my Yiddish there. But you're talking about... What's uh, it like being an MC? Shut up, David. <laughs> <laughs> you got heavy Jews. You got dynamite here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. But when, I, when I introduced my mother to my present wife, who was not Jewish, I said, oh, uh, there yeah. must have been an yes. interesting trauma. I said, Mom, I want you to meet Annie. And, uh, uh, Annie? and she, she knew that my wife was uh, Catholic and not Jewish. And she said, sit down, uh, make yourself comfortable, you know, take a piece of fruit and relax. And I'll, I'll be in the kitchen. My head will be in the oven. If you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just quietly, you know. It was a big disaster. And then they came to know each other. And, and my mother is... Head over heels in love with Annie and their, their best His best wife son. is one of the gracious, beautiful, talented Anne Bancroft. I mean, it was nothing. <laughs> but Did she convert? Was it, wasn't it a Did she convert? Uh -huh. Are you kidding? She don't have to convert. She's a star. <laughs> <laughs> Did you convert? Yes, I converted. I, uh, Brooks wasn't I'll tell you why I converted. I am no longer a Jew. And I'll tell you the reason I'm no longer a Jew. Because when a Jew is in trouble, when we, when we panic, when we're in trouble, and we want to say, oh, my God, or Gatineau, or Gaval, you know, one of our expletives. And then we follow it with a sign. Now, how are we going to follow it? Like, if you're we Catholic, with a sign. yeah, like a Catholic says, oh, my God, they, you know, they cross it, right? They're covered. But with a Jew, what do you, Gaval, I mean, where do you, <laughs> where do you go? I mean, two triangles, that's a lot of work. <laughs> By the time you finish the second triangle, <laughs> it's over. It's easier to do the cross it. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, David. I, I was just suggesting that we get off of Mel because he's so hot now, you don't want to see him fade right in front of right, your eyes. Right, you know? right. <laughs> so I thought if I made this gesture, perhaps I'd get the focus now. <laughs> I'll think, I'll talk until I get to a point. Uh, <laughs> here, is, here is the point. Yes, David. The point is, what reminded me is the curses in a Yiddish home are very, very special, and especially the curses that you get from a mother. They're unlike anything that you get in a Gentile home. They're very specific, and they sucker you in so as to give you the impression that it's not a curse. They say, may you inherit 
a huge estate. And on that huge estate have a hundred mansions. And in a hundred mansions, a hundred beds. And may you flip from bed to bed with malarial fever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely place. <laughs> there, Do you remember any other? No. Uh, may a barracks grow in your stomach? Uh, uh, a barracks? barracks, an army barracks. Oh, yeah. grow in your stomach. It's not funny, but it works. <laughs> <laughs>